Good evening everyone. This is another video from Shomus Biology. And this particular lecture we are going to talk about uh, the DNA polymerase 3. So if you wish to know what is DNA polymerase, the structure of DNA polymerase, the function of DNA polymerase 3, then this video is just for you. Because we need to understand the most important enzyme for the replication of prokaryotes, that is DNA polymerase. In very simple words I can tell you, DNA polymerase 3 is involved and serve as the major enzyme for DNA replication while replicating the leading strand as well as the lagging strand of the prokaryotic DNA. Yes, a polymerase 3 is actually involved in the synthesis of both the leading strand as well as the lagging strand in a DNA replication, in prokaryotic DNA replication. Okay, and now here I am going to tell you exactly how this process works because you remember one thing that in uh, you carry in case of prokaryotic uh, dna replication uh, we have this let's say the dna and the two strands are separated creating what is known as a replication fork and this is where the polymerase loads itself right the polymerase loads to this both the strands of the dna with the help of a clamp known as a beta clamp okay apart from that the rest of the structures of the polymerase are connected uh, and the rest of the structure looks something like this. So this polymerase will move. This is this DNA polymerase 3 and this DNA polymerase 3's movement is 5 prime to 3 prime direction of newly synthesizing DNA. So while they are synthesizing new strands of the DNA, this DNA polymerase will move from the 5 prime to 3 prime of the newly synthesizing DNA. Okay, next uh, what we need to understand is this the second uh, process, the second stuff here. The second is the, the idea of this DNA polymerase 3, how exactly DNA polymerase 3 is loaded, how exactly it initiated the process and why, are, uh, why this DNA polymerase 3 is considered as the primary enzyme for DNA replication in prokaryotes. Because in DNA replication what the polymerase need to do is basically polymerize, right? Polymerization is the most important job while replicating a DNA strand and polymerization directionality is this 5 prime to 3 prime of the newly synthesizing strand that is the direction of polymerized uh, polymerization or movement so if I say here they have 5 prime to 3 prime directionality of newly strand synthesizing here so one of the strand have this 5 prime 3 prime this direction the other strand will have uh, 5 prime 3 prime this direction because obviously uh, in the original DNA, we have this, right? They have a complementary pairing. So, if you have 5, 3 prime, the opposite strand will have 3, 5, five prime. Now, the question in prokaryotes, we know that uh, they move in the two different directions for both the strands. The strands where a continuous synthesis is done by DNA polymerase 3 is known as a leading strand. And the strand where the synthesis is not continuous is known as a lagging strand. So, this is the lagging strand here. This is the leading strand synthesis done by DNA polymerase enzyme here. Okay. Now, one very important concept is that DNA polymerase is involved in the process of polymerization and the direction of polymerization is 5 prime to 3 prime. But apart from that, DNA polymerase 3 is also accountable for any kind of damages or any sort of uh, mistakes that uh, they can, they might do in the process of uh, the replication. They might in, involve with some sort of erroneous nucleotide addition during the polymerization event. So during the polymerization event, they end up in error. They end up in error and if they end up in error, then they can fix the error and they fix this error. They fix error. Okay. With the help of exonuclease. Exonuclease activity which is also known as proof reading proof reading activity exonuclease activity or proof reading activity is something that is done here exonuclease or proof reading activity now this exonuclease or proof reading activity that they uh, engage the direction for that is 3 prime to 5 prime so the exonuclease activity that dna uh, polymerase 3 share is a 3 prime to 5 prime on the reverse version of the polymerization activity that is 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization 5 prime to 3 prime nucleus or proof reading is 3 prime to 5 prime activity okay and that is how 
uh, the, the, the functions are different in uh, these examples. Now next, what we need to say, these are the major role of this polymerase 3 enzyme. Now the reason the DNA polymerase 3 is involved in the process as a major enzyme in DNA replication in prokaryote is because of its high processivity. The processivity is very high. So there are two things that makes the polymerase as a number one contender here, polymerase 3, one is the processivity. And second one is the speed, speed of polymerization. Both are very high in case of this DNA polymerase 3, both are very high. Processivity is a term used to say how many nucleotides being added by the DNA polymerase 3 before it falls off from the template strand of the DNA. The processivity is high. The higher the processivity means the lengthier or more number of nucleotides that particular polymerase can add before it release the template strand. And speed of the polymerization, the speed of the polymerization for the DNA uh, polymerase 3 enzyme is also very very high. It's approximately 1000 nucleotides per second. 1000 nucleotides per second is the speed of polymerization. 1000 nucleotides per second. And with this 1000 nucleotide per second, just imagine how fast a DNA polymerase 3 is in adding nucleotide sequences. Very, very fast, okay, in adding nucleotide sequences. That is why DNA polymerase 3 is the key enzyme for synthesizing both leading strand as well as lagging strand in prokaryotes. Now I'll move you to the next part of our discussion because I talked about the very basic information, the importance of DNA polymerase 3, functions of DNA polymerase 3, right? And uh, fidelity, the third important point that I also mentioned is the fidelity, okay? What is fidelity? Fidelity is uh, the degree of error that uh, or, or Fidelity is related to the degree of error that this DNA polymerase show while adding nucleotides. When DNA polymerase 3 adds nucleotide, there is error, but they can fix the error with exonuclease or proofreading activity. So the fidelity of this enzyme is also very good. So it has very good fidelity. It has a very high speed of polymerization. It has higher processivity. That is why DNA polymerase 3 is used for the DNA replication in both leading as well as lagging strand in prokaryotes. Clear? Once you understand that, I'll move to the structure of the DNA polymerase 3. I did not start with the structure because I don't want to you to look at this image at the very beginning because this image may look scary, but it is not that difficult to understand. What you need to understand is that any enzyme, there should have a catalytic uh, region or catalytic site, a subunit that carries a catalytic site. In this, R, in this DNA polymerase 3, DNA polymerase 3 also uh, is a multimeric enzyme, multimeric, multimeric enzyme means it has multiple subunits, multiple subunits are out there. The multiple subunits that are out here, what we know is that alpha, beta, theta, epsilon, tau, gamma, delta, these are the subunits, right? But among these multimeric subunits, there is a pattern. The pattern is the catalytic. Not all the subunit is catalytic. Only one subunit among them is catalytic and that is alpha subunit. This one. This red color. This large red one. This and this. This is alpha subunit. Now if you look at this image very clearly you can understand that they have very similar structures in both the sides. So if we split it from the center they are almost looking like a mirror image until this gamma. Beyond gamma the structure becomes little different. But till the gamma structure, they have identical subunits arrangement in the left side as well as in the right side. They have identical subunits arrangement. And this is important for the DNA polymerase 3 to carry out re DNA replication in both leading and lagging strands simultaneously at the same time. So catalytic subunit is this alpha. Now in, in the alpha, there is another subunit, theta and epsilon. So the epsilon is the exonuclease, a proofreading unit, okay? And epsilon is being controlled or being attached to the alpha unit by theta. So theta is the, theta is helping in the attachment, attachment of 
epsilon to alpha unit and epsilon's engagement to alpha unit is very important okay and that is done by theta theta holds this epsilon to the alpha unit so that not only this enzyme can polymerize but if by any error it adds an erroneous nucleotide or wrong nucleotide then the exonucleus function by epsilon unit can uh, cut that nucleotide out and can reinitiate the polymerization with fresh nucleotides in that place so that is something that is the idea on dna polymerase uh, three subunits important for catalytic function for the polymerization and exonuclease function both are very important functions then we have tau subunit which holds both the subunits together apart from the tau the rest of the other subunits that we can see here the other subunits means this list that is gamma and delta then psi and chi gamma delta psi and chi psi and chi in the left side as per the image uh, gamma delta in the right side but according to the polymerase imagine that chi and psi is in the right side of the polymerase and delta and delta prime is the left side of the polymerase this structure delta delta prime gamma chi and psi is known as a clamp loader clamp loader sequence of dna polymerase 3 or clamp loader protein of dna polymerase 3 okay known as gamma complex as well so this gamma complex also known as the clamp loader complex helps in loading the beta clamps to the template dna strands be it leading strand be it the lagging strand but this part of the enzyme loads the beta clamps on to the template dna and this is very important because without the beta clamp the processivity would be very low with the help of the beta clamp the processivity of the dna polymerase 3 is very very high that is the reason it can add more and more nucleotides before falling off or releasing from the template dna strand okay so that is something related to the polymerase enzyme that is involved in there okay and I believe the structural role you have a clear idea and I told you earlier that the beta clamp looks something like this two subunits of beta clamp that will be loaded to the leading and lagging strand by the clamp loader sequence clamp loader part of the DNA polymerase 3 enzyme and when we load it and then after loading this polymerase is ready to initiate the process of polymerization to carry out the process of polymerization quite easily without any problem okay so these are the units you know the catalytic and exonuclease unit unit number one tau subunits holding them together and this the third one is gamma complex the beta clamp loader so beta clamp loader's function is very important to load the beta clamp without the beta clamps processivity of the dna polymerase 3 will be low okay and we have already discussed why we call dna polymerase 3 as a primary enzyme for prokaryotic replication right so that is in a sense is a fundamental idea regarding dna polymerase structure with three separate units and its function i believe you have a clear idea if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends colleagues subscribe to get more videos like that in future thank you bye